Let us look at another example of break-even analysis. Three firms, A, B and C, manufacture the same product. The selling price is rupees 10 per unit of the product which is equal for all the firms. The fixed costs for firms A, B and C respectively are rupees 100,000, rupees 200,000 and rupees 324,000. While the variable costs per unit are rupees 8, rupees 5 and rupees 4 respectively. Determine the break-even points for all the firms. How much profit is earned by the firms if each of them sells 70,000 units? What will be the impact on their profits if sales increase by 30% and decrease by 30%? So let us understand this example in more detail. So let's say this is firm A. This is firm B. And this is firm C. Now all these three firms must have either bought or leased their buildings or the facilities. Also they must have bought or leased the machinery which they are using for manufacturing. All these components add up to the fixed cost for the company. And the fixed costs have been given as 100,000 rupees for firm A, 200,000 rupees for firm B and 324,000 for firm C. Now these firms also have to procure raw material and also employ labor in order to manufacture the products. And these costs, that is the material cost, labor cost, etc. contribute to the variable cost which varies by the number of units that are being produced. So we have been given the variable cost. Variable cost for firm A is rupees 8 per unit. Variable cost for firm B is rupees 5 per unit and variable cost for firm C is rupees 4 per unit. Now once the material has been manufactured it needs to be sold to the outside world and the selling price for the product has been given as rupees 10 per unit for all the firms. So the selling price is rupees 10 per unit. Same thing for B. And same thing for C. So here we have the fixed cost and the variable cost that each of these firms is incurring in order to produce the products. And we also have the selling price for the product. Now we have to find out the break-even point for these three firms that is at how much quantity will the firm be at a position of no profit no loss. Next we have to find out how much profit is earned by the firms if each of them sells 70,000 units. So basically whatever break-even point we find that number of units will be the number of units at which the firms will have no profit, no loss. And then if they keep on selling more units till 70,000 units are sold, how much is the profit that these companies will earn? Also, we have to find out the impact on the profits 
if the sales first increases by 30% and second decreases by 30%. So let's find out the answers to each of these questions one by one. So now the first question is to find out the break even points for the firms. But before that, let's look at the information that has been provided to us. So F stands for the fixed cost, which is for firm A 100,000 rupees. Small c has been used for the unit variable cost. And small p has been used for the unit selling price. So now the first question is to find out the break even points for the firms. Now what is a break even point? So break even point is the point where the firm will have no profit and no loss. That means the returns that the firm is getting will be equal to the total investment that the firm has made. Or in other terms, the total cost will be equal to the total revenue. Now total cost comprises of fixed cost and variable cost and that should be equal to the total revenue. Now fixed cost is constant but variable cost varies by the number of units which are being produced. So let's say the number of units which are being produced at the break even point is Q and the unit cost is small c. So this is equal to the total revenue and the total revenue will be equal to the quantity produced multiplied by the price of each unit at which it is being sold in the market. So now let's bring q on one side. So qp minus QC is equal to F or we can make Q common P minus C is equal to F or Q is equal to F divided by P minus C. Now let's use this formula to find out the break even point for firms A, B and C. So for firm A Q is equal to F which is 100,000 rupees. So 1 0 0 0 0 0 divided by P minus C. So P is 10 minus C which is 8. So this is equal to 100,000 divided by 2. So 2 5s are 10 and 0, 0, 0, 0. So Q is equal to 50,000 units. Now let's do the same thing for B. So Q is equal to, the fixed cost for B is 200,000 rupees. So 200,000 divided by P which is 10 minus C which is 5. So 200,000 divided by 5. So 5 fourths are 20, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is equal to 40,000 units. Now same thing for C. So Q is equal to the fixed cost for C is 324,000 rupees. So 324,000 divided by P which is 10 minus C which is 4. So 10 minus 4, 324, 0, 0, 0 divided by 6. Now 6 fives are 30, 2 carryover, 6 fours are 24 
and then 0, 0, 0. So this is equal to 54,000 units. So firm A will break even after it has produced 50,000 units. Firm B will break even after it has produced 40,000 units. And firm C will break even after it has produced 54,000 units. So BEP is 50,000 units. Here BEP, BEP is for break even point, is 40,000 units. And for C, BEP is 54,000 units. So let's try to see if we can come up with any analysis here. So P is the same for all the three firms. C is the highest for A, lower for B and the lowest for C. But F is the opposite. So F is lowest for A, higher for B and the highest for C. Now for A, the break even point is very high because the variable cost is a very high percentage of the selling price. So out of the selling price of rupees 10, 8 has been used to cover the variable cost. So now only 2 rupees per unit is remaining to cover for the fixed cost of 100,000 rupees. While for C, there is a huge margin of 6 rupees to cover for the fixed cost. However, the fixed cost is so high that the break-even point has come out to be 54,000 units. For B, the variable cost is 5. So 5 rupees are available for covering the fixed cost. But fixed cost is 200,000 rupees. So the break-even point has come out to be 40,000 units. Now again, the lower the break-even point, the better for the firm because that means that it has to produce less to cover all its cost and then whatever it produces after that becomes its profit. So now let's move to the next question which is how much profits are earned by the firms if each of them sells 70,000 units. So now we have to find out the profits made by three firms at a sale of 70,000 units. So let us look at the graph of cost versus sales. So let's say the cost is on the y-axis and sales in terms of units is on the x-axis. So the cost line will be something like this while the revenue line will be like this. So this is total revenue and this is total cost and the point here is the break-even point and this quantity is the break-even point quantity now the firm can continue producing more than the break-even point quantity so what we have been given is that the firm is producing 70,000 units so how much is the profit so the profit will be this amount which is also known as the margin of safety and in case of firm A the break-even point is 50,000 units so let's find out the profits for each of the firms so for A profit is equal to 70,000 minus 50,000 units this is equal to 20,000 units now if you have to convert this into rupees 
we'll have to multiply this by the difference between the selling price and the cost price. So profit in terms of rupees is equal to 20,000 multiplied by so each unit is being sold at 10 rupees and the cost price is 8 rupees per unit. So this becomes 20,000 multiplied by 10 minus 8 is 2 which is equal to 40,000 rupees. So another very interesting analysis. So till the break even point the difference between the selling price per unit and the variable cost per unit is contributing to cover the fixed cost. So as we had discussed earlier in case of firm A, 2 rupees which is the difference between the selling price and the cost price is contributing to cover for the fixed cost of 100,000 rupees and that is why the break even point came out to 50,000 units. And after the break even point then basically the fixed cost has been already covered. So the remaining cost for each item or each unit is the variable cost. So that is why we did 10 minus 8. 10 is the selling price per unit and 8 is the variable cost per unit. And this is applicable to the 20,000 units which is being produced after the break even point. The units which are being produced before the break even point are using this margin of 10 minus 8 to cover for the fixed cost. Now similarly for firm B, so profit is equal to 70,000 minus 40,000 units. So this is 30,000 units. Now profit in terms of rupees is 30,000 multiplied by the difference between the selling price and the cost price which is 10 minus 5. So this is equal to 30,000 multiplied by 5. So 5 3 is a 15 and 0 0 0 0 rupees. Similarly for firm C profit is equal to 70,000 minus 54,000 units. This is equal to 16,000 units and profit in rupees is equal to 16,000 multiplied by the selling price which is 10 minus the cost price which is 4. So 10 minus 4 so 16,000 multiplied by 6 so 6 6 are 36 3 carry over, 6 1 are 6, 7 8 9, 96 thousand rupees. Now again if we analyze the profit for firm A, B and C, we note that the profits for firm B is the highest because first the break even point is low which is 40,000 units and second it has a good margin between the selling price and the cost price. In case of firm A, the break even point is a little higher but again the margin is very very low 10 minus 8 so profit per unit in terms of rupees is only 2 rupees. While in case of firm C, the break even point is very high which is 54,000 units but the margin is also very high which is 10 minus 4 equals to 6 rupees. So the total profit is 96,000 rupees. Now let's move to the next part which is what will be the impact on their profits if sales increases by 30%. But before that let me note down the profit here. So capital P will denote the profit. This is 40,000 rupees for firm A 
150,000 rupees for firm B and 96,000 rupees for firm C. So now we have to find out the impact on profits when sales increases by 30%. So impact on profits if sales increase by 30%. So earlier we had been given that the sales for these firms is 70,000 units. Now the sales is increasing by 30%. So what is 30% of 70,000? So 30% of 70,000 this is 0 0.3 multiplied by 70,000 which is equal to 7 threes are 21 and one decimal so we'll cancel one zero so zero 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 so 21,000 units increase in sales so the new sales is now somewhere here which is 70 plus 21 which is 91,000 units so now we have to find out what is the impact on the profits if each of these companies is selling 91,000 units so for firm A profit is equal to the number of units being sold which is 91,000 minus the number of units at break-even point which is 50,000 so this is equal to 41,000 units and profit in terms of rupees is 41,000 multiplied by the difference between the selling price and the cost price which is 10 minus 8 so 41,000 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 82,000 rupees so here we have to find out the percentage increase in profit And that will be equal to the new profit in rupees which is 82,000 minus the old profit which is 40,000 rupees divided by the old profit which is 40,000 and that this is because we want to see how much percentage increase is there on top of the original profit and then multiplied by 100 so this is equal to 82,000 minus 40,000 is 42,000 divided by 40,000 multiplied by 100 so three zeros three zeros one zero one zero so two twos are four and two one two fives are ten so 5 1s are 5 and 5 2s are 10. So 105% increase in profit. So let's do the same thing for B. So profit is equal to the new sales is 91,000 minus the break even point, which is 40,000. So this is equal to 51,000 units and profit in terms of rupees will be equal to 51,000 multiplied by the difference between the selling price and the cost price which is 10 minus 5 which is 5. This is equal to 5 ones are 5, 5 fives are 25. 
So the profit in rupees is 255,000. Now we have to find out the percentage increase in profit, which will be equal to the new profit, which is 255,000 minus the old profit, which is 150,000. divided by the old profit which is 150,000 multiplied by 100 so this is equal to so 255 minus 150 is 105,000 divided by 150,000 multiplied by 100 so three zeros can be cancelled here one zero can be cancelled here five 3's are 15, 5, 2's are 10, 3, 1's are 3, sorry, 3, 3's are 9, so 1 carry over, and 3, 5's are 15. So 35 multiplied by 2 is 70. So 70% 70 is the increase for B. Now let's do the same thing for C. So for C, the profit in terms of units will be 91,000 minus 54,000 units which is equal to 91 minus 54 is 37 so 37,000 units now profit in terms of rupees will be equal to 37,000 multiplied by the difference in the selling price and the cost price which is 10 minus 4 which is 6 so 6 7s are 42 4 carry over 6 3s are 18 plus 4 is 22 and 0 0 0 rupees now again percentage increase in profit will be equal to 222000 minus 96000 divided by 96000 multiplied by 100 so 222000 minus 96000 is 126000 divided by 96000 multiplied by 100 so these three zeros get cancelled so upon calculating this comes out to be 131.25 percent so basically if the sales increases by 30 percent for a the profits will increase by 105 percent for b the profits will increase by 70 percent and for c the profits will increase by 131.25 percent now the next question is what if the sales decrease by 30 percent so let's see that scenario so the next scenario is impact on profits when sales decrease by 30 percent so basically now we are saying that instead of the original sales of 70,000 units, the sales is decreasing by 30% of 70,000. So 30% of 70,000 is 21,000 and 70,000 minus 21,000 is 49,000 units. So now the new sales is here, which is 49,000 units. So now we have to find out the impact on profits. So let's start with firm A. So for firm A, now the new profit is 49,000 units minus 50,000 units. So actually it's a loss because the sales is even below the break-even point of 50,000 units for firm A. So this is equal to 
minus 1000 units. Let's find it out in terms of rupees. So minus 1000 multiplied by the difference between the selling price and the cost price which is 2. So this is minus 2000 rupees. So now we have to find the percentage change in profit which is equal to the new profit which is minus 2000 rupees minus the old profit which is 40,000 divided by the old profit which is 40,000 rupees multiplied by 100. So this is equal to minus 42,000 divided by 40,000 multiplied by 100. So these three zeros get cancelled. One zero gets cancelled here. Two twos are four. Two twenty ones are 42. And two fives are 10. So this becomes five ones are five. And five twos are 10. So minus 105%. So the decrease is 105%. Similarly for B, profit is equal to 49,000 minus 40,000 which is equal to 9,000 units. So profit in terms of rupees is equal to 9,000 multiplied by the difference between the selling price and the cost price which is 5. 5 which is 9 fives are 45 rupees. Now percentage change in profits is the new profit which is 45,000 minus the old profit which is 150,000 divided by the old profit which is 150,000 multiplied by 100. So this becomes minus 105,000 divided by 150,000 multiplied by 100. Zeros get cancelled. This zero gets cancelled with this zero. 5 2s are 10. 5 3s are 15. 3 3s are 9. 1 carryover. 3 5s are 15. So this is minus 70%. So the decrease in profit is by 70%. And the next one is for firm C. So for C, the profit is the sales which is 49,000 units minus the break even point which is 54,000 units is equal to minus 5,000 units. So basically the company is incurring a loss of 5,000 units. Again, profit in terms of rupees is minus 5000 multiplied by 10 minus 4, which is 6. So 6 is a 30,000 rupees. And percentage change in profit is the new profit, which is minus 30,000 minus the old profit which is 96,000 divided by the old profit which is 96,000 multiplied by 100. So this is equal to minus 126,000 divided by 96,000 multiplied by 100. So this is equal to 131.25 it is minus percent so basically if the sales decreases by 30 percent for a the profit decreases by 105 percent for b the profit decreases by 70 percent and for c the profit decreases by 131 percent now if you recall for scenario number three if the sales was increasing by 30 percent the 
profits were also increasing by the same percent which was 105%, 70% and 131.25% respectively.